I believe he won a few of the rounds, but I won majority of them. And I believe it was a, uh, what can you do, one of them tough things, decisions in boxing. Uh, we both put on a good fight, best we could do. And you know, his country's at war. So people are siding for the country at war, but... Tyson Fury has taken a bold and unexpected step as he hinted at a sudden retirement after his loss to Alexander Usyk. I miss uh, my father. Uh, I, I say my father, hey listen, uh, you live that. I no one ever saw this coming as a loss for the British fighter and it just became more shocking after he announced his retirement on social media. With this, he shuts out the possibility of a comeback in October, where he would have had a chance to bounce back. Oleksandr Usyk has been shorter, lighter, and older than all of his opponents since he moved up to the heavyweight division. Usyk's heart and skill are enormous, and he overcame a major size disadvantage against Tyson Fury to become the world's first undisputed heavyweight boxing champion in 24 years. Usyk defeated Fury by split decision on Sunday, knocking down his hulking opponent in the ninth round and eventually earning a narrow win on two scorecards. The 37-year-old Ukrainian is the first heavyweight to hold every major title belt since Lennox Lewis. Usyk, now with 22 wins in all 22 fights, added Fury's World Boxing Council title to his own World Boxing Association, International Boxing Federation, and World Boxing Organization belts with a spectacular late-round rally in a back-and-forth matchup between two previously unbeaten champions from a strong era of heavyweight boxing. It's a great time. It's a great day, said Usyk who is six inches shorter than Fury and weighed 30 pounds lighter this week. Usyk started quickly, but then had to survive while the confident, charismatic Fury dominated the middle rounds. Usyk surged in the final rounds, just as the Olympic gold medalist has done so many times in his career, taking control with a dominant eighth and nearly stopping Fury in the ninth. Usyk hurt the 6'9 Fury, who now has 34 wins, a draw and a loss in 36 fights with a left hand and eventually sent him sprawling into a corner in the final seconds of the round, getting credit for a knockdown right before Fury was saved by the bell. Fury struggled to mount a consistent attack after nearly getting stopped, and the knockdown turned out to be the decisive factor in the decision. I miss... Uh... Thank you so much to my team, Usyk said while fighting back tears in the ring. It's a big opportunity for me, for my family, for my country. Slava Ukraini! Fury kissed Usyk on the head after the final bell, and Usyk hugged Fury several moments after the decision was read. Fury also said he wants the rematch in October. Usyk is the first undisputed heavyweight champion since Lennox Lewis held the honor for five months in 1999 and 2000. He is also now the lineal heavyweight champion by beating Fury, who beat Vladimir Klitschko to earn that distinction in 2015. After moving up from cruiserweight, Usyk upset Anthony Joshua to win three title belts in 2021. He kept them through a rematch and another defense while angling for the ultimate payday of a fight against Fury in Saudi Arabia. Usyk landed 41% of his 407 punches, while Fury landed just 31. 7% of his 496 punches, according to CompuBox statistics. Usyk both threw 260 to 210 and landed 122 to 95 more power punches. Usyk has now joined the elite club of fighters who held every major world championship belt at heavyweight, and he is the first to do it in the four belt era, which began in 2007. The list of undisputed champions includes Jack Dempsey, Joe Lewis, Floyd Patterson, Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, and Mike Tyson. The most recent undisputed heavyweight champ was Lewis, who beat Evander Holyfield in late 1999 and enjoyed a five-month reign. 
He soon lost a title because of the territorial squabbles that have beset boxing for the past quarter century and routinely prevented the biggest fights from happening. Fury and Usyk both asked for this matchup, and they finally got together in the ring largely because of the involvement of Saudi Arabia, which made the financial reward simply too great for the fighters, typically recalcitrant promoters, and the sanctioning bodies to reject. Fury will reportedly make more than $100 million for the bout. To reach the lucrative Western pay-per-view audience, the bout didn't begin until 1.45 a.m. on Sunday morning at Kingdom Arena. Usyk was aggressive from the opening bell, repeatedly getting inside his taller opponent's defenses to land body shots. Fury was his usual carefree self, even putting both arms on the ropes in a corner and pretending to dodge punches when Usyk advanced. But Fury picked up his attack from the third round, working his size advantage and his typically unpredictable movement to throw right hands behind his sharp jab. Fury appeared to hurt Usyk with body shots right at the belt, and he rocked Usyk twice in the sixth with vicious uppercuts. Usyk rallied, bloodying Fury's nose and face with a left hand. Usyk then punished Fury in the ninth, hitting him with another concussive left before battering the British star around the ring. Fury sagged into a corner while barely staying on his feet with about 10 seconds left in the round. Referee Mark Nelson could have stopped the fight, but he ordered Usyk away for a standing count interrupted by the bell. Reports were circulating that Usyk was taken to hospital with a suspected broken jaw, but just minutes later, the newly crowned undisputed champion held a post-fight press conference. Usyk didn't speak to reporters for long as he was left in tears while speaking about whether his father, who sadly passed away in 2012, visited him spiritually before his fight with Fury. I miss my father, Usyk said. I said to my father, hey listen, you live there, I live here, please, no coming for me. I love you. For me, it's hard when my father is coming for me because I remember all my life, I know he's here. The Ukrainian also said he doesn't want to talk about boxing after spending nine months in training camp to prepare for his fight with Fury. My start was October 2023, November, December. Nine months of work. I missed New Year. I missed the birthday of my son. I missed the birthday of my other son. I missed the birthday of my daughter. I missed the birth of my daughter. I missed all of my family holidays, all the time training. My focus was only this fight. Now I'm happy. I want to go back home, he said. Fury, however, sounded so discouraged after the fight, thinking he did enough to win the fight, and disagreed with the judges' scorecards. Clearly, Usyk will be forced to face Fury for a second time as their fight had a two-way rematch clause. Regardless of the result, the rivals are expected to fight again in October. However, one of the fighters would seemingly be absent at the time they're meant to meet next, as he announced his retirement just a few hours after their fight. Despite showing some sportsmanship in the aftermath by congratulating his opponent, Fury then ruined the moment with his remark on the microphone in the ring when approached by a member of the media. Which has not gone down well with boxing fans, Fury, again just moments after losing to Usyk by split decision, threw that one last punch. It was a very low blow of the metaphorical variety. Fury intimated that Usyk, the Ukrainian boxer, had been awarded the fight because Ukraine is at war. Russia invaded Ukraine more than two years ago. You know his country's at war, so people are siding for the country at war, Fury said during an in-ring interview. Of course, it was the heat of the moment, and Fury would have been feeling very emotional after losing the fight and losing his undefeated status in the process. But it's a remark he probably won't be too happy with when everything settles down. It started with the Brit saying he felt like he has won the fight, which is fair enough, that's what all boxers say when they lose via the judge's scorecard. But to bring up Ukraine's current situation outside of boxing is not acceptable. And it's no surprise that boxing fans aren't best pleased with the comment. Make no mistake, I won that fight and I'll be back, he added. Manuel Oliver Palermo of Spain scored the fight 115. 112 in favor of Usyk and Craig Metcalf of Canada scored at 114. 113 in favor of Usyk. Mike Fitzgerald of the United States scored at 114. 113 in favor of Fury.
I believe I won that fight, Fury said. I believe he won a few of the rounds. I won the majority of them. Before those remarks, the fighters embraced several times and Fury had kissed Usyk on the head as if in respect and admiration. After Fury's remarks, water sprayed into his face from the direction of Usyk's camp. Usyk motioned for it to stop. Later in the interview, Fury said, I believe I won the fight, but I'm not going to sit here and cry and make excuses. It was a good fight. He also added, it was one of the daftest decisions in boxing. I'll be back. The good little man got the decision. We'll go back to our families and I'll see him again in October. We'll go back, rest up. We'll run it again in October. Usyk was not asked in the ring about Fury's comments, but he was asked about whether he wanted to fight Fury again. Yes, of course, very much, he said. I'm ready for a rematch. But Tyson Fury turned against his in-ring comments and downplayed talks of a possible rematch after announcing his retirement on his Instagram story, adding a worrisome caption to his post about the fight. He posted a picture of himself in the post-fight conference speaking about the fight. Afterwards, he then posted a clip of himself in the ring, giving his opponent Akis in the forehead with the caption, One last time. And while many have claimed his caption was an indirect message, telling Oleksandr Usyk that they had to meet in the ring one last time, others strongly believe he may be hinting at a possible retirement after 36 fights. It'll really be sad to see Tyson Fury leave boxing this way, as he's truly fed the eyes of boxing fans with some of the very best boxing shows over the years. However, if he claims he wants to leave, there's hardly anything anyone can do about it. But it's expected that he finds some hope in himself, returns for his rematch, and probably gets his victory over Usyk in October. But while we await the latest development from Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk's win is the meal the boxing world is feasting on right now. And boxing professionals who had predicted a win for him wouldn't be happier, seeing how he elegantly strode to victory. World-class trainer Shane McGuigan had picked Usyk for a win and stated why Usyk would be the anointed one to hand Fury his very first career loss, and just as he predicted, it came to pass. Making his pick and stating why, he said, I'm leaning towards Usyk in winning the later rounds and holding form. I think it will be quite even down the stretch. I think he might just be picking up rounds with his activity late on in the fight. For instance, you know, he did his usual thing. He just dismissed it long ago and knock him out early. But what I would say is he looks like he's trained. Like mm -hmm. He looks like he's chiseled up around the face. And I think he had to do that. There were certain fights where he could have kept a bit of weight on him. Asked about the kind of fight he was expecting, McGuigan responded, They will both have enough power to knock each other out, but I think they have enough power to keep each other honest and get each other's respect. And if that's the case, Fury's going to try to long arm him and slow the pace down as much as possible, put his arm out and try to use that size and stand over the top of Usyk. Like for instance against Wilder, Wilder is naturally quite thin but he doesn't have a high output um, and that was good for him to keep a bit of weight on because he could nullify him and use his strength but with Usyk he just doesn't do that, he's a, he's a slickster. I think they've done the right decision to sort of take some weight off him. He continued, and it might take Usyk a few rounds to really fire off that. But once he learns how to fire off it, create an angle and go to the body and stuff, it might become a volume game where it's Usyk who is throwing more punches. He's working at a higher tempo. There's no way Fury can maintain an output to keep up with Usyk. I don't think it's going to be one of them ones where it's like we walk away from it being like, oh, so Gatty Ward. But yeah. from a skill aspect, I'm oh, really excited. Yeah. yeah. Prediction, if I had to push you for <laughs> um, <laughs> On recent form, Usyk. Ooh. Also, McGuigan was asked about what he felt Usyk could do to win. He stated, I believe it's not try to load up, fire two or three shots to get you in rather than one slip and a big shot. Lots of head movement. Get underneath him, create lots of head movement and shoot your legs in. And when you're on the inside, you can't let him lean on you. You can't let him impose his size. You'll have to slip, get round him. And I think he's very good at those little tricks on the inside and then not try to knock him out with one shot. Just land and keep the output high. Force Fury to fight at an unrealistic pace. Closest person to sort of like physically impose himself, and he did that early, and then Usyk adjusted. So I don't know. I think it's going to be points. I think it's going to be very close on points. And it, you know, I'm not going to sit on the fence. I, I have to say, I think like.
Well, Usyk probably didn't follow all these instructions, but he did get the better of his foe, especially in the ninth round. In addition, he said, all he wants to do is slow the pace down all the time, get into his rhythm, get into his comfort zone, lots of feints, lots of movement, and then just firing off those angles. And I think if you keep that up, out of the two of them, he can sustain it for a longer period of time. And I believe that is one of the reasons why he will nick a close points decision. His training camps, and they were a long time ago. You know, he has to take a lot of... I don't believe both of the fighters are the same since, that, since those fights. If, if he, he knocked out Dylan White, a guy that um, is, 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 is good, he's tough, but... When asked who he would rather train, McGuigan said, In terms of where they are in their career, I would rather work with Usyk. Fury has a great chance in the fight. I think only until the Francis Ngannou fight, everyone thought he was going to win it. But I just think if it's a technical fight that Usyk is the fresher athlete, and I think he's got far more to his game. He then added, if you boiled Usyk down into a middleweight, he'd be a very effective middleweight. Where if you boiled Tyson Fury into a middleweight, with his style and lack of power per weight almost, he wouldn't be as effective at another weight. So I would be more excited to work with Usyk. Take it to you, then he'll drop back or take a side. Constantly changing the angles. And for a guy that, that doesn't throw combinations, like in flurries, which, which, uh, which uh, Fury does, um, doesn't do, I just believe like he's going to lose a lot of rounds. Robert Garcia was also asked about the kind of fight he was expecting, and he claimed it wouldn't be as thrilling as making it to be, as both fighters would be super cautious of each other, considering what's at stake. I don't think it will be a thriller. I think it will just be Usyk fighting smart, working angles, and hopefully he doesn't tire out so he can do it for 12 rounds. That's what I mean. Fury's so heavy, so strong, so big that Usyk could tire out because he needs a lot of footwork. He needs a lot of movement to be able to do that for 12 rounds. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be for the undisputed, you know, heavyweight uh, uh, championship, which is something we haven't had in a while. You know, so I'm excited about the fight. I think uh, pushing the fight one month after that cut was maybe not enough time. Uh, from, from the pictures that I've seen, the cut looked pretty big, pretty deep. He highlighted Usyk's strengths ahead of the match, and Usyk lived up to the expectation. He's got great footwork. Great angles. Work on that all night. But whenever Fury holds on or uses his body, I would tell Usyk not to use any weight on him. Not to use any strength on him. Just to relax his body. He then continued, If Fury is using his body to his advantage, I would tell Usyk not to wrestle with him. Not to use strength on him because that will also tire him out. So I'd let the ref break it up, do his job, and then continue with his footwork and angles. I think angles, footwork, and combinations are going to make a big difference. So I think, I think that's going to be Fury's game plan. Tire what if Fury sits on him? It's going to be too heavy for him. Tire him out and finish him. But you'll be happy if Usyk won. Oh, I, li I like Usyk. I like Usyk, you know. And, and even though I still... Fury, the bigger and supposedly more powerful man, outboxed the boxer in the first half of the fight before Usyk turned the fight on a dime with a brutal ninth round assault that appeared to have the Gypsy King out on his feet for a moment as he stumbled around the ring before crashing to the canvas. When it was all said and done, Usyk was crowned the first undisputed heavyweight champion since Lennox Lewis in 1999 and the first of the four belt era. Fury showed great boxing technique early, upending the narrative that Usyk's boxing technique would be too much for the bigger man. Fury's distance management was key as he popped with clean jabs and dug hard to Usyk's body. Fury was confident enough as he seized control of the action to begin taunting Usyk. The one thing that was questionable in Fury's approach, even as he was firmly in control of the action, was his willingness to move backward, often fighting off the ropes or while trapped in the corner. Things started to turn in round 7, as Usyk found more success with his constant forward pressure and overhand lefts, taking advantage of Fury fighting off the back foot so frequently but round 9 was the true turning point as Usyk landed several clean shots before Fury began stumbling around the ring. Usyk continued to swarm with big shots until Fury dropped to the canvas. The big moment started with a clean straight left to Fury's jaw that sent Fury back into the ropes. Usyk chased Fury around the ring as Fury stumbled on rubber legs, landing lefts and rights. Fury finally dropped, and as he beat the 10 count, the bell sounded, likely saving Fury from suffering a stoppage by knockout. After the knockdown, 
Usyk never took his foot off the gas and outworked Fury over the second half of the fight. No coming for me. I love you. With the win, Usyk joins Terence Crawford and Naoya Inoue as the only male fighters to have earned undisputed status across two weight classes in the four belt era, having previously been undisputed at cruiserweight. After suffering the first defeat in his storied career, Fury maintained his belief that he won the fight, but said he had no doubt he would activate his contractual right to a rematch. Fury also added a questionable statement, seemingly suggesting that the judges favored Usyk because of the ongoing conflict surrounding Russia's invasion of Usyk's native Ukraine. And that's all for now. For the very best updates on news, moments, events, and actions in the world of boxing, stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel and don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted when we drop quality contents like this. Until next time, peace out.